Good morning students from today we will be studying a new chapter which is transport in animals and plants today we will be studying an introduction about the transport in animals and plants so all living organisms need to transport food water gases minerals hormones to different parts of their body and also the waste products which are produced during various processes are transported to the excretory organ from where it is eliminated out of the body the plants and animals have different organs and processes for the transport of substances small animals such as flatworms jellyfishes lack specific body system for transport of substances such as gases thus the diffusion of gases takes place through the body surface whereas large and complex animals require and use specialized body systems that help in transport of substances the circulatory system and the excretory system carry out the function of transport in large and complex animals firstly we will be studying about the circulation in human being the circulatory system is a body system that permits blood to circulate and transport nutrients oxygen carbon dioxide hormones and blood cells throughout the body the circulatory system in human comprises of the blood the blood vessels and the heart now we will be studying each of these parts in detail the blood is the body's major medium of transport blood perform various functions such as it carries oxygen to all parts of the body it carries carbon dioxide from all the tissues of the body and it brings it to the lungs it carries digested food material to the cells it carries waste such as urea to the kidneys blood is generally red in color in humans and other mammals and also in vertebrates however the blood of some animals are blue or green or colorless so when a sample of human blood is taken in a test tube and when it is rotated at a high speed in centrifuge the blood separates into its component which includes a straw colored liquid which is called as the plasma and a thin white layer as you can see in this picture which constitutes the white blood cells and the platelets and a dark brown mass of cells which are called as the red blood cells thus there are three types of blood cells which includes red blood cells white blood cells and platelets the fluid part of the blood is called as the plasma it is made up of more than 92% of water and contains glucose dissolved nutrients and hormones which is transported through the blood it also contains proteins that help the blood to clot now we shall study the types of blood cells the first amongst it is the red blood cells which are also called as the rbcs they are disc shaped cells which carry oxygen and carbon dioxide red blood cells contain a red pigment which is called as the hemoglobin the presence of hemoglobin makes the blood appear red when the blood carries oxygen the hemoglobin binds with the oxygen forming oxyhemoglobin likewise when the blood carries carbon dioxide the hemoglobin binds with the carbon dioxide forming carbaminohemoglobin the blood is rich in oxygen is called as oxygenated blood whereas the blood with very little oxygen in it 
is called as the deoxygenated blood the next type of the blood cell is the white blood cell which is also called as the wbcs the white blood cells are colorless and larger but they are fewer in number when compared to that of the red blood cells white blood cells can continuously change its shape as they travel along the blood vessel its main function is to protect the body against infection by destroying the foreign materials and the last type of the blood cell is the platelets platelets are much smaller than white blood cells its main function is to help the blood to clot clotting prevents the loss of blood during injury so blood is circulated to all the parts of the body through the blood vessels the presence of certain substances called as the clotting factor prevents the blood from clotting when they are present within the blood vessel the blood vessels are tubular channels that transport blood to all the parts of the body the blood vessels are of three types and they are arteries capillaries and veins arteries except that of the pulmonary artery carry oxygenated blood from the heart to all the other parts of the body they have thick walls as the blood is pumped out of the heart at a high pressure the passage of the blood flow is narrow as the walls of the arteries are thicker the main arteries divide to form smaller blood vessels which are called as arterioles the next type of blood vessel is the veins the veins except the pulmonary vein carry deoxygenated blood from all the parts of the body to the heart they have thin walls as the blood travels smoothly at a low pressure the passage of the blood flow is wider as the walls of the veins are thin as you can see in the picture veins have valves that prevents the blood from flowing back as you can see in the picture which is given so the last type of blood vessel is the capillary capillaries are blood vessels that connects the arteries and veins as you can see in the picture the capillaries have thin wall which allows oxygen carbon dioxide and nutrients to pass between the blood and the cells of the tissue now we will be studying about the next part of the circulatory system which is the heart the heart is a fist sized muscular organ which is situated in the chest between the lungs and above the diaphragm it is located in the center of the chest cavity it is positioned slightly towards the left in the thoracic region and it is enveloped by the pericardium coming to the structure of heart the heart is divided into two halves by a thick muscular septum and each of these half is divided into two chambers the two upper chambers are called as the auricle the auricle is also known as the atrium the auricle or the atrium has thin wall there is the two lower chambers are called as the ventricles and they have a thick wall the right side of the heart which is the right chamber of the heart pumps the deoxygenated blood to the lungs and the left chamber of the heart pumps the oxygenated blood to all the other parts of the body now we shall study the flow of blood through the heart the deoxygenated blood from the whole body enters the right auricle through two veins which is the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava the superior vena cava brings the deoxygenated blood from the head chest and arms whereas 
the inferior vena cava brings the deoxygenated blood from the abdomen and legs so once the deoxygenated blood enters the right auricle it contracts and pumps the deoxygenated blood to the right ventricle then the right ventricle contracts and pumps the deoxygenated blood to the lungs through the pulmonary artery in the lungs the exchange of gases occur and the deoxygenated blood becomes oxygenated the oxygenated blood from the lung enters the left auricle through the pulmonary vein the left auricle contracts and pumps the blood into the left ventricle the left ventricle then contracts and pumps the oxygenated blood to all the parts of the body through the aorta the heart is a double pump where the blood circulates through the heart twice hence it is also called as double circulation it pumps the deoxygenated blood to the lungs and oxygenated blood to all the other parts of the body at the same time the two auricles contract together to pump the blood into their respective ventricles and the two ventricles contract together at the same time to pump the blood into the pulmonary artery and the aorta respectively the heart has four valves that ensures that the blood flow is only in one direction the four valves of the heart are the tricuspid valve the mitral or the bicuspid valve the pulmonary valve and the aortic valve the tricuspid valve separates the right auricle from the right ventricle and the bicuspid valve separates the left auricle from the left ventricle the pulmonary valve is present between the right ventricle and the pulmonary artery whereas the aortic valve is present between the left ventricle and the aorta as you can see in this picture so when the ventricles contract the valves between the auricles and ventricles closes thus preventing the back flow of the blood into the auricles likewise when the ventricle relaxes the valves which is present between the pulmonary artery and the right ventricle or the valve which is present between the aorta and the left ventricle closes thus preventing the back flow of the blood into the ventricles so now we shall revise the flow of blood through the heart so what happens is the deoxygenated blood is brought into the right chambers of the heart through the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava the superior vena cava brings the deoxygenated blood from the head chest and arms whereas the inferior vena cava brings the deoxygenated blood from the abdomen and the legs so once the deoxygenated blood enters the right atrium the right atrium or the right auricle contracts and pumps the blood into the right ventricle from where the right ventricle contracts and pumps the deoxygenated blood into the lungs through the pulmonary artery it is in the lungs where the blood gets oxygenated and the oxygenated blood enters the left chamber of the heart through the pulmonary vein and when the left atrium or the left auricle contracts it pumps the oxygenated blood into the left ventricle and when the left ventricle contracts the oxygenated blood is pumped to all the parts of the body through the aorta so this is how the blood flow or the double circulation happens in the heart so the two auricles contract at the same time to pump the blood into the respective ventricles 
Likewise, the two ventricles contract at the same time to pump the blood into the pulmonary artery and the aorta respectively. So, this is half. There is a flow of blood through the heart. So, in this video, we have studied an introduction about the transport of substances in animals and also we have studied about the circulation in human beings and also the different parts which are involved in the circulation. Thank you students.